Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Monday, September the 21st. Today is the Feast of St. Matthew, Apostle and Evangelist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. For it is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together. Within the Lord's house we walked in the throng. Let death steal over them, let them go down to Sheol and alive. For evil is their dwelling place and in their heart, but I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. God will give ear and humble them, he who is enthroned from of old, because they do not change and do not fear God. Old Testament reading today is from Nehemiah, chapters 5 and 6. Now there arose a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish brothers. For there were those who said, With our sons and our daughters we are many, so let us get grain that we may eat and keep alive. There were also those who said, We are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our houses to get grain because of the famine. And there were those who said, We have borrowed money for the king's tax on our fields and our vineyards. Now our flesh is as the flesh of our brothers, our children are as their children. Yet we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but it is not in our power to help it, for other men have our fields and our vineyards. I was very angry when I heard their outcry in these words. I took counsel with myself, and I brought charges against the nobles and the officials. I said to them, You are exacting interest, each from his brother. And I held a great assembly against them, and said to them, We, as far as we are able, have bought back our Jewish brothers who have been sold to the nations. But you even sell your brothers that they may be sold to us. They were silent and could not find a word to say. So I said, The thing that you are doing is not good. Ought you not to walk in the fear of our God to prevent the taunts of the nations, our enemies? Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us abandon this exacting of interest. Return to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards, and their houses, and the percentage of money, grain, wine, and oil that you have been exacting from them. Then they said, We will restore these and require nothing from them. We will do as you say. And I called the priests and made them swear to do as they had promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, So may God shake out every man from his house and from his labor who does not keep this promise. So may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year to the thirty-second year of Artaxerxes the king, twelve years, neither I nor my brother ate the food allowance of the governor. The former governors who were before me laid heavy burdens on the people, and took from them for their daily ration forty shekels of silver. Even their servants lorded it over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. I also persevered in the work on this wall, and we acquired no land, and all my servants were gathered there for the work. Now when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left in it, although up to that time I had not set up the doors and the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come and let us meet together at Hak-Kepharim in the plain of Ono. 
but they intended to do me harm. And I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? And they sent to me four times in this way, and I answered them in the same manner. In the same way, Sanbalat, for the fifth time, sent his servant to me with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem also says it, that you and the Jews intend to rebel. That is why you are building the wall. And according to these reports, you wish to become their king. And you have also set up prophets to proclaim concerning you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. And now the king will hear of these reports, so now come and let us take counsel together. Then I sent to him, saying, No such things as you say have been done, for you are inventing them out of your own mind. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking, Their hands will drop from the work, and it will not be done. But now, O God, strengthen my hands. So the wall was finished on the twenty-fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty-two days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid, and they fell greatly in their own esteem, for they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. And today is the Feast of St. Matthew, and our writing this morning is from one of my favorite uh, old Lutherans, Valerius Herberger, uh, from his book, The Heart Postals of the Gospels, uh, regarding St. Matthew. And he says, St. Matthew was an excellent, noble man, not only one of the twelve fountains of consolation, the apostles of Jesus Christ, but also one of the four great spiritual streams of paradise, a holy evangelist, whose words flow from the great fountain in paradise, Jesus Christ. He not only praised the Lord Jesus in his heart and with his tongue, but he also put his quill to paper and wrote his account as a memorial. And finally, he confirmed the truth of his gospel with his blood. Is this not an honorable man? Pay attention so that everything in and about you is directed toward the glory of the Lord. According to David's example in Psalm 103.2, In the kingdom of God it is said, Et qua cunque potes arte placare peace. That is, strive with every skill and word to please your Savior, Christ the Lord. My Latin is terrible. Sorry about that. None of the other evangelists describe the history of the Lord Jesus to such an extent as Matthew. He also has many beautiful passages that cannot be found in the others. Here the Lord Jesus says in 1128, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And again, 1820. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. And in 2820, Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. These three passages, which should cause the legs of all devout Christians to run quickly to the church, were written only by Matthew. Ever since that time, his book has always been valued highly. Jerome reports that St. Bartholomew preached the Gospel of Matthew in India. The Kepharis writes that in those lands a collection of St. Bartholomew's sermons existed. Theophylact and others report that St. John or even Mark translated the Gospel of Man Matthew into the Greek language. Some say that in the 479th year after Christ's birth, Matthew's body was found on Cyprus, and on his chest was a copy of his Gospel, and that his body was transferred to Constantinople and buried in the church of St. Stephen. Regarding St. Matthew, St. Matthew, also known as Levi, identifies himself as a former tax collector, one who is therefore considered unclean, a public sinner, outcast from the Jews. Yet it was such a one as this whom the Lord Jesus called away from his occupation and wealth to become a disciple. Not only did Matthew become a disciple of Jesus, he was also called and sent as one of the Lord's twelve apostles. In time, he became the evangelist whose inspired record of the gospel was granted first place in the ordering of the New Testament. Among the four Gospels, Matthew portrays Christ especially as the new and greater Moses, who graciously fulfills the law and the prophets, and establishes a new covenant of salvation in and with his own blood. Matthew's Gospel is also well known and beloved for its record of the visit of the Magi, or the Sermon on the Mount, including the Beatitudes and the Our Father, and for the institution of holy baptism, and the most explicit revelation of the Holy Trinity. Tradition is uncertain where his final field of labor was and whether Matthew died naturally or a martyr's death. 
In celebrating this festival, we therefore give thanks to God that he has mightily governed and protected his holy church through this man, who is called and sent by Christ to serve the sheep of his pastures with the Holy Gospel. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, merciful and holy Bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give and increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers, bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church and the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels. And be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. O Son of God, our blessed Savior Jesus Christ, you called Matthew the tax collector to be an apostle and evangelist. Through his faithful and inspired witness, grant that we may also follow you, leaving behind all covetous desires and love of riches. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.